Looking for something meaningful and life-changing to help you move through the challenges of life? Then join Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church of Gastonia for an inspirational message prepared just for you. Visiting with homecoming back at her home church in Charlotte with her mother and family, so she's not with us today. stated a moment ago dealing with the series inviting favor into our lives and uh, we've been looking at the life of Joseph and we know by uh, the historical record that Joseph was favored by his father Joseph's father saw that he had character and wise and even though he was not the elder brother who would typically have been the one who would have been given authority and headship in the family it was out of Joseph's character that won in favor his father gave him a coat with many colors and the Bible says that his brothers began to hate him not only was Joseph given the coat of many colors but he also had divine revelation he was a dreamer and the Bible says that he had a dream and he told his brother the dream and the brothers began to hate him more they devised a scheme and a plan to get rid of Joseph I gotta tell you that when you invite favor in your life everybody won't celebrate you Joseph's brothers ended up not killing him, but they sold him into slavery, sold him to the Ishmaelites, and they took him down to Egypt, and he was then bought by Potiphar, who was the captain of the prison for the Pharaoh, and, and because of the favor that was in Joseph's life, Pharaoh Potiphar made Joseph head of his household. That means Joseph was in charge of everything. And so last week, we looked at the favor that Joseph had while he was there uh, in Potiphar's house. And I want to advance this a little further here. This morning, we did part three. And I told the church at the 8 o'clock service that we were going to do part 4 at the 10.30 service. So that means that you need to get a CD of the 8 o'clock service today for part 3 so you can have the series part 1, 2, 3, and then you'll get 4 here. And, uh, and then they need to get part 4 of the 10.30 service so that they can have the series. But if we want to pick it up, I want to read a few verses here. Um, Genesis 39 go to verse 4. I'm reading from the New King James Version. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had he put under his authority. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house, and all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. And I appreciate those of you who are standing as we reverence the reading of the word. And then verse number six says, Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph. And she said, lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, look, 
my master does not know what is with me in the house, and he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So it was as she spoke to Joseph day by day that he did not heed her to lie with her or to be with her. But it happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work. And none of the men of the house was inside. That she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. So it was when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside that she called to the men of her house and spoke to them saying, see, he has brought into us a Hebrew to mock us. He came in to me to lie with me and I cried out with a loud voice. Is that the essence of what your Bible says? Then we're together this is inviting favor into my life, part four. And I want to subtitle this one, When Favor Meets Temptation. When Favor Meets Temptation. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this body before me, these heroes. Worshippers. Thank you, God, that we are here on a Sunday morning celebration. And Father, we're in a generation now that is subject to many temptations. So, Father, I pray that you would speak to us who have desired, who have sought, who have invited your favor, your grace into our lives. What do we do when we Father, I pray right now that you would guide this teaching, illuminate our minds and hearts, speak Holy Spirit, that we might hear what you have to say. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Grab your neighbor by the hand and uh, look at your neighbor in the face and say, neighbor, oh good neighbor, I don't know about you, but I'm inviting favor into my life and say, neighbor, do you want to know what to do when favor meets temptation? Turn on the other side and get another hand. Oh, yeah, that's that neighbor preacher. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh, good neighbor, good, good neighbor. Say, I don't know about you, but I declare favor in my life. Say, neighbor, what do you do when favor meets temptation? Amen. Clap those hands. You may be seated. I told you that the favor that we experience uh, is as a result of the covenant relationship that we have with God that God in his own good pleasure, out of his own decision, uh, chose to be in relationship with us, his children. Even though we had messed up, we separated from God, we moved from the place of God, God loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life is that the word of God and so we understand then that we have opportunity um, to walk in the favor of God and and favor is synonymous with grace and grace is the empowerment uh, from God to do what uh, he would have us to do and God has given us grace and God 
has given us favor. And we discover here in this text and in the story of Joseph, a man who was under great favor. That this man now has been sold uh, into slavery, but uh, he was made an overseer in the house of Potiphar uh, because favor was with Joseph. I don't know about you, but you can have favor and the favor of God can increase uh, not only with God, but the Bible said that it can increase with man as well. How many want your favor with God and man to increase? I don't know about you, but I, I need it to increase. I need it to get great. I need it to be abounding. The Bible says that Joseph is doing well uh, in Potiphar's house. Joseph uh, is ruling and Potiphar uh, trusts in him so much so that, uh, that Potiphar didn't even know uh, what he had in stock. Potiphar uh, didn't even know uh, what he had in his inventory. He, he didn't know what he had until he was putting a spoon in his mouth. That's how much favor uh, that Joseph had and how he organized the house and how he ordered the house and how the glory of God came forth in his life. Everything you do ought to show forth the glory of God. Now listen, the Bible says here uh, that uh, in verse number 7, it says, And it came to pass after these things, that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph, and she said, lie with me. Uh-oh. When you invite favor into your life, and you see God working, and you see favor increasing in your life, please be well assured that there is an unofficial invitation that also goes out from the kingdom of darkness. Satan sends them out to demons and to devices. And when you are inviting favor, the devil is inviting destruction. Yeah, don't be fooled now to think that you are going to just walk in the favor of God and, 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 and enemies are not going to be upset, that the demonic world is not going to come gunning at you. You have got to get ready and you got to know that just as many invitations that you send out uh, so that you can attract the favor of God, the enemy is sending out emails and uh, Facebook uh, posts and tweets and, and everything else, Instagram, trying to bring temptation and destruction in your life. Joseph is functioning in favor. Joseph is operating uh, in favor, and here comes the devil. Look at where you are right now. Look at where you are right now. Look at the things that God has opened up to you. Uh, look at the new territory that God has given you. You, uh, you have added responsibility. You have heightened levels of access. And, and uh, look around uh, at what God has been doing lately in your life. Look at how things are beginning to come together in your life. Look at some of the things that you've been praying about and some of the things you've been agreeing uh, in your family about. Look at how these things are now uh, starting to come to fruition. They are manifesting and, and you are believing more and more that God is working out his purpose and his plan in your life. Now, at the same time, I want you to also take notice of how the enemy has shown up. Uh-oh. Come on. Look at what God is doing. And I want you to be real with yourself this morning. 
I, I want you to take a real assessment that God things have been coming together. I appreciate the things that you've been doing. I appreciate the doors you've been opening. I appreciate the prayers that uh, you have been answering. I thank you, God, that uh, some of the obstacles that I, I was challenged with before, that you've allowed me now to go over those hurdles. And yet, at the same time, I don't want you to become blinded to the fact that the enemy has shown up. You didn't have to look for him. I'm not asking you now uh, to try to create something. I'm telling you uh, that if you are walking in the favor of God, I want to tell you that the invitations have already been sent and the demons have already shown up. Nobody else may not know about it. You may not be experiencing it publicly, but I want to tell you that just like favor coming into your life, the enemy is going to slip in a demon. Come on, help me in this. There, there is, there is a, a strategy of the enemy, and we need to look at his methodology, but, uh, but there is also a methodology of how to have victory over the enemy. I want to tell you that uh, there are seven things that we can see in Potiphar's wife uh, that are typical in every attack of the enemy. Now, John 10 and 10 talks about uh, that the thief comes but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But the good news is that Jesus said, but I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. How many of you want to walk uh, in that abundant life? Everyone according to, and I want you to go there and see it. Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. Everybody, the Bible doesn't leave anybody out. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 10 and go to verse number 13. It says this, are you ready? No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. I want you to now take a breath. Because I told you that when you begin to walk in favor, when you send invitations to invite favor, the devil sends invitations to invite demons into your world. But the good news is that Paul says, don't panic. Tell your neighbor, don't panic. And because God will give you a way of escape. So this morning, we want to look at seven things that are typical in how the uh, the enemy begins to work on you even as he began to work on Joseph through Potiphar's wife. Now, so then let's look at the characteristics of temptation. First of all, write it down. The temptation was vis visual. The temptation was vis visual. All right? Notice now, notice when there is visibility that means to see with your eyes. All right? Is that right? Visual. She saw Joseph. The Bible says that it came to pass after these things in verse 7 that the master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph. All right? Now, she set her eyes on him, and the verse 6 says at the latter part that Joseph was handsome in form and appearance, all right? And, and so uh, part of his wife started checking him out. One of the most common ways the enemy trips us up is through the eye gate, through what you see. Come on, somebody. Visual, visual. You can see it. You see it. And, and, and if you aren't careful, that that you see will begin to trip you up. Uh, you remember Achan in Joshua chapter number uh, 7. 
the Bible said that God told the people that when they were getting ready to go and to take Jericho, anything that was of the treasure of value, please don't touch it. Save it and put it back in the treasury of God. But the Bible said that Achan went in and he saw uh, some nice gold and silver and he desired and he took it and he hid it uh, up under his tent. And the Bible said that Israel began to lose battles because uh, they had been disobedient and it was because of the fact that Achan saw. And you got to be careful what you see because it's through the eye gates that the enemy uh, begins to try to attack you and to get you to attach to something that will bring destruction in your life even when you are favored you got to understand that David over in 2 Samuel chapter number 11 and verse number 2 the Bible said that while uh, the David's army was out in battle, David was on the top uh, of the palace and he noticed that uh, there was this woman down in the valley bathing and her name, he didn't know then, but her name was, was Bathsheba and, and so Bathsheba uh, was a brown babe, bathing in a bath and David saw her and the Bible says when he saw her he had to have her he inquired who is that and they said that is Bathsheba Uriah's wife and David because he allowed his eye gate to mess him up he said bring her to me it is the forbidden and it seems that our eyes are drawn to the forbidden the most. There is power in the forbidden. Isn't that right? I mean, my God, what is the attraction of the forbidden? I mean, you wonder, come on now. What's the attraction in the forbidden? It seemed that, and that we see that that we ought not have. Uh, we look at that that we uh, ought not touch. And, and it seemed like that's the thing that we want the most, the thing that we ought not bother, the thing that we ought not go after, the thing that we see with our eyes that we need to step away from. Why is that? It is the forbidden. And, and so we got to understand what is it about the forbidden? You know, the truth is, it, it's not necessarily all about what the forbidden is as much as it is about what's in us. Huh? I mean, come on now. He was a guy. He may have been good looking. Joseph may have been good looking, as the Bible said. Uh, but she had a man. Huh? And, and... And so it was more about what was going on in her than it was about who Joseph was, the forbidden. And Joseph understood it. And he understood that this is something that I don't need to be touching. And we got to get a revelation that when we got favor in our lives and favor uh, meets temptation, we got to understand um, that the first thing that's going to happen is that it's going to be visual. You're going to see some things. Come on. And many lives are ruined because people did not protect their eye gates. Come on, somebody. And then the truth is, think about all the things that are in our eyesight right now. Think about all the things that we see. Think about the things we see, my God, in movies, the things we see in television, the things we see in the culture, the things that our eyes see. And you see what you see, isn't that right? You see what you see. And sometimes you see some wonderful looking stuff, um, but you got to understand that everything that looks wonder wonderful is not for you. That there's a whole lot of stuff that looks good, but it's forbidden. I wish I could talk to some people in here. You know, 1 John chapter number 2 and verse number 16 says this. It says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You see that? The lust of the eyes. All right? It is not of the Father, but is of the world. You got to be careful about what you see. 
the temptation is going to be visual. And, and this woman saw, this woman saw a Joseph and, and, and she saw that he looked so good that she had to have him. And there are a whole lot of people that wish they had not seen what they saw. Come help me in here. I know there are some people right now that are regretting the fact that I let my eyes wander like they did. I know there are some people who are saying, my God, I might not have gotten tripped up like I did if I had not allowed, if I had protected my eye gate because when you let your eyes begin to take a longing look now let me tell you she said it it said she took a longing look now the reality is that you might see something you might see somebody you'll see something uh, that'll come across uh, your screen but uh, but you don't have to sit there now and long you understand she didn't oh, say, oh that's a pretty nice guy she said Some of you have been looking too long. It's visual. It's visual. And then the second, the second thing is that it is versatile. It is versatile. Temptation is versatile. Uh, versatile is the, uh, being capable of doing many things, having uh, varied uses. Evil is just that. It is versatile. The enemy uses a multiplicity of ways to entrap people come on somebody you got to recognize that uh, that he has a whole lot of tricks up his sleeve and if he can uh, get you one way he'll try to get you another way and what uh, moves you may not move me and what moves me may not move you but when we got favor on our lives when we invite favor into our lives you can rest assured that he's gonna find something in his trick bag uh, to try to trip us up I'm talking about inviting favor and when favor meets temptation because the reality is you will meet temptation, especially when you walk in favor. Butler says that Joseph was at first, when he first encountered this ordeal, he was tempted with despair. He was tempted to be depressed because he had been taken from his homeland. He had been done wrongly by his brothers. And so the temptation was that he could have gone in a corner and had a pity party. But Joseph overcame that temptation. And so the enemy now then uh, says, I got to be a little versatile. And so he didn't, he was not successful uh, in tempting him to have a pity party. Now there is the temptation. Uh, to defile Joseph in delight. He couldn't get him in despair and depression, so now he's going to do a switcheroo and say, I'm going to get him in delight. In other words, if pain does not uh, uh, beat you, the enemy will try pleasure against you. I wish I could get two or three. There is no area of your life that uh, you can leave unguarded. That's right. Not one Place. I'm talking about when favor meets temptation. You do have favor. You do invite favor. You want favor. You want to increase. I just want to tell you that you got to guard your life. Don't become comfortable in favor so much so that you let go of your discipline and your walk with God. You got to pray, you got to believe, you got to trust, you got to meditate, you got to worship, you got to keep your spiritual disciplines in order. So many people have made the mistake that when favor came into their life and God began to allow them to walk in new levels and new experiences, um, they let their worship and their discipline life go. And before you knew it, the enemy had come in and taken over and chased favor out of their life. Somebody say, not me, not me. Huh? Come on now. Many have gotten off track because of delight, because of pleasure. And you got to put on the whole armor of God. You got to make sure that I I'm God in my back, I'm God in my front, I'm God in my thought life, I'm God in my actions, I'm God in everything. Because when I invite, when I attract favor, the devil is trying to attract demons um, that will disrupt the favor in my life. And you know, I told you that he has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And he will use whatever maneuver or trick 
necessary to get you. All right? Number three, are y'all here? The temptation was vivacious. Vivacious uh, means full of animation and spirit. It is lively and charming. The enemy will come in a way that he'll dress it up and make it look appealing. And then he'll make it look safe to try. Come on, somebody. He'll cloak it in something that seems okay only to become a distraction, a destroyer. The wife, the wife was not just throwing hints. She wasn't just trying to clear her throat over there so he would notice her. She came out and said, listen, lie with me. Joseph said, I can't, I can't do it. And she was one, she was vivacious. Come on, she was lively. She was spirited. Maybe y'all will get it if I say it like this, that while Joseph was working, she was twerking. I wish I could get somebody that will help me. And maybe you would get it if I say it like that, that, and that she was vivacious. And, and you got to understand that you got to be careful uh, of how uh, in the normal everyday routine the enemy is using every available means to get you. He's on this job uh, when you are doing your job. You got to be careful when you are doing your work, when you're going about the daily activities while Joseph was in there minding his business, while Joseph was attending uh, to what his servanthood called for. Uh, there was that woman and there was that guy, there was that thing, there was that uh, desire that was trying to work its way into your life. It is vivacious. It is lively. It is going to keep on trying to come. Is there anybody in here who understands uh, that you got to be ready, that if you're going to walk in favor, you got to understand that the enemy is going to throw some things your way and he's going to cloak it and he's going to dress it up and it's going to be lively. It's going to be charming. It ain't going to be nothing you don't want. My God, he can't tempt you with something that doesn't move you. Uh, yeah, it, uh, yeah. the Bible went to an a, 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 a extra mile to say that Joseph looked good. Because they wanted you to understand that the devil is going to paint it up and make whatever it is that's just your style. Man, that's how I like them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He dresses it up. What's that man? You know, they, they dress up and make liquor drinking. So, the man that says, if I ever do such and such. lively and the enemy will do that and then the other thing here is that not only that but when favor meets temptation there is a vertex somebody say a vertex it is the vertex is the intersection of two lines as they come together there there is the timing in the vertex you got to understand uh, that when God favors you look at uh, 39 verse uh, number two it says Joseph was successful in the house. And then verse uh, number three, it says that uh, the Lord made all that he did prosper in his hand. All right? And then you look down at uh, verse number six. It says he left everything in his hand and uh, uh, he favored him. In other words, we see that God was making him overseer. He was well favored. He had much success. And why is it that the enemy uh, seems to want uh, to bring his line of destruction at the time when you were elevated, promoted, and when God is blessing you, your line of success was going well. Your family was going well. Your marriage was going well. It seemed like everything was going well. And then the vertex came, the line that intersected with the enemy, your line of favor intersected with his line of destruction. The Bible says that Joseph was doing well. And then and you look at verse number 7, it says, And it came to pass after these things 
after what things? After he has been successful, after he's been doing well, after the favor that he's been attracting is working to his good, after the fact that it seemed like uh, that there was failure in his life, but he was able to bounce back, after his brothers put him in a pit, and yet God favored him to go down to the house uh, of Potiphar. And while he's in the house of Potiphar, he's a servant, and yet uh, Potiphar puts him in control. And it says that he was being prosperous, he was being blessed why is it that it seems like just when God puts you on your feet just when it seems like things are going well things are coming in line for you you are beginning to see the favor of God uh, working in your life that that's when the enemy will begin to bring another line to intersect with your line of victory I want to encourage somebody right now because you're in the midst of it right now it's hot and heavy on you right now you got some blessings going on in your life but I want to tell you that what you've seen uh, that has shown up is the vertex that has come from the enemy. There is an intersection where he is trying to bring destruction and I came this morning uh, to give the devil a notice that we're going to give him a hot shot this morning that he is a lie. He is a defeated foe and we recognize his devices. Satan, we are not unaware of your devices. You might not be willing to say it but I know by the spirit that because the favor has come upon you that the enemy has brought a vertex in your life. It said after these things, after all that good stuff happening, after God doing all that blessing, after God doing all that elevating, the devil knows when to strike. Doesn't he? And one of the most crucial times that the enemy will strike is at the time of success. You don't believe me? Watch this. Turn over to Second Chronicles. Can I teach this? All right. They say they'll talk about me on Facebook. All right. They say just when the preacher says he's about to close, somebody say, take your time. Mm -hmm. And I sort of take them seriously. I didn't know they were really just saying that. I thought when you said take your time, that meant I had another 20 minutes. Thank you. Second Chronicles chapter number 26. It is speaking about a man, let's see, by the name of Uzziah. And Uzziah, when you go back, I'm not going to give you all of this, he became king at 16 years of age. And when you read chapter 26, it talks about how God was able to cause him to be able to take territory. He was able to expand the region. He was able to build up towers in Jerusalem. And he did all of these wonderful things. He commanded armies. He took over uh, territory. He was doing all of these great and all of these wonderful and all of these mighty things. And then verse number 15 said, And he made devices in Jerusalem invented by skillful men. Uh, to be on the towers and the corners to shoot arrows and large stones. So his fame spread far and wide, for he was marvelously helped till he became strong. You see what I'm saying? That, 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 that the enemy knows how to come at crucial times when God is blessing you, when things are working out, when things are coming together, when the order of your life that seems like it has been off course has gotten back on track, you got to be careful not to let yourself get strong because the Bible said that when Uzziah got strong, that's when he got beside himself and that's when he allowed the temptation to take over his life and he even went into the temple to try to light incense which was not the responsibility of the kings but it was the responsibility of the priest and when the enemy sees that you think now you have made it, he will tempt you, he will try you, he will come uh, and bring a vertex at the crossing and the intersecting of his destructive line along with your line of favor. When favor meets temptation, this woman, the timing, look at, let's go back. The timing, it says in verse 11, but it happened about this time when 
shows up, went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the house was inside. She waited until nobody else was around. The vertex, the timing, it, it, it was the intersecting. The enemy is watching and waiting and he's plotting and he knows, he knows when I'm going to plunge. He knows when I'm going to release it. He knows when I'm going to turn up the pressure. I just want to warn you that when you invite faith, uh, you got to also know that there's another line that's going to intersect uh, with your line of favor. And the Bible says she waited until that good moment. But you got to understand uh, that your character is really measured by what you do when nobody else is around. Part of us wife waited until the coast was clear. I want to tell you that there's some stuff that's been trying to get you. There's some things that have been trying to overtake you. There's some things that have been tempting you. But I want to tell you uh, that you watch it and you be very mindful because they are waiting until the appropriate time when they can get you off where nobody else is looking and that's when your favor is going to have to stand. I preached this morning the subtopic was favor don't fail me now you've been good to me you've empowered me before and I know Joseph at the point that this woman said there's nobody else around and the truth is there are a whole lot of us that are looking waiting on nobody else to be around there are a whole lot of folk that are waiting to do some things in the dark when nobody else is around when the saints of God aren't clapping and and when the songs aren't being sung and and when there's nobody that looks like they know me when I can get to a place uh, all by myself when I can get to a place uh, where I'm not familiar and there are a whole lot of people who have messed up in unfamiliar places I wish I could get some helpers in here and that all of us can probably look back over our lives and say God I hate the day that I got off by myself I hate the day when I tried to get around the corner I hate the day uh, whenever I let myself uh, forget about who I was when nobody else was looking and I want to tell you, you will come to that place where nobody is looking. And then the other thing, there's another V. Uh, it's vicious. Vicious means very violent and cruel. It is dangerously aggressive. The devil does not give up easily. Huh? The Bible says in verse 10, so it was that she spoke to Joseph day by day. Give me some. Y'all sleep. I know y'all sleep. I just tried to do a room check and y'all sleep. You ain't sleep. Day by day. Day by day. Every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So can you come in here? We, there's some stuff in, the, in this room that we need done. I think Paula wanted you to move some of these boxes over here. Can you come over here? And, and I think they're right up there. Day by day. The enemy is persistent. He is aggressive. He is vicious. And day by day, the enemy wants to wear you down. Very persistent. Notice how the tempter came to Jesus as Jesus was walking in favor. He had been baptized. He went out uh, into the wilderness to be tempted. And the Bible says uh, that he was there preparing for his ministry. And the word said that the tempter came and said, if these uh, stones, you can make them into bread. I know you're hungry. He tempted Jesus three times. He was persistent. And I want to tell you, uh, don't think that just because you resisted the first time. Don't think that just because you were able to overcome the first 
first time that that's going to be the only time. I want to tell you the nature and the methodology of temptation is to keep on wearing you down, to keep on whispering to you, to keep on emailing you, to keep on Facebooking you, to keep on inboxing you, to keep on calling and texting you, to keep on driving by your street, to keep on coming by your cubicle, to keep on coming by your workstation. He day by day. He's going to do it. He's going to remind you. He's going to bring it to you because his ulterior motive is your destruction. You've been inviting favor, but the devil has been inviting demons. And then there's another word, very similar to. And that is, that is the quality of seeming. That is an appearance of truth, all right? Uh, uh, what Potiphar's wife was doing was subtle. It was deceitful. It was sneaky. It was not real. She didn't want a real relationship. She wanted to please her own lust and destroy the favor on Joseph's life. Quit fooling yourself to think that that drug is something that you just have to have. It's just fooling you. Quit fooling yourself to think that the enemy wants you, uh, but he wants you to be deceived and he will do whatever is necessary. There are many people who have allowed deception of the enemy uh, to make them think that they were getting something real. You the only one, just one drink, just one hit, just one dance. You got to understand that the enemy uh, is eager. Huh? Uh, he is eagerly very similar to us. Very similar to us. He is very eagerly deceitful in making you think he tries to dress up something to make it look real and it's not the real thing and many uh, have uh, already uh, been uh, uh, fooled by the enemy a as a result and there is always uh, a good uh, thing that the enemy has you thinking is good and it's not good he makes you think it's real and it's not real uh, she tried to make Joseph think she really wanted him for who he was baby sister brother and you got to check them out and to see if they really mean you good is this what God said because there are a whole lot of folk dressed up and they are talking the talk um, but they don't care nothing about you they just want what you got they just want the favor uh, that's in your life they don't even understand it the devil sent them you got to be careful who shows up in your life somebody just showed up in your life you better go back now and check yourself before you wreck yourself because of that person that just showed up in your life thank you Holy Ghost somebody this morning you know and that while you have just already gotten things back in order check out who showed up in your life lately who, who, who suddenly asked you for your number who, who began to inquire about you lately huh? see I'm talking to somebody and then the final the final thing you will see about the temptation is vehement he, he, it, it, that means showing strong and often angry feelings marked by forceful energy. Am I talking? Look at verse number 12. It says, uh, it, well, in verse number 11 it says, But it happened about this time that when Joseph went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the house was inside, uh, that she caught him by his garment. And she said, Come on, baby, lie with me. But he pulled away and left his garment in her hand and fled and ran out. And so it was when she saw uh, that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside, that's when she got angry. She became vehemently angry. And she said that this man has come to mock us and you got to recognize that Potiphar's wife couldn't take no for an answer. 
shots uh, and she became aggressive and I want to tell you that some of you have been under the pressure and it's been pulling at you, it's been pushing at you, it's been gnawing at you, it's been trying to come and it's been coming and it's being aggressive and now it's turning up the heat. It seems like right now you're at a point but I thank God God sent this word today to get you set free because you didn't know how you were going to be able to get out of that situation and you didn't know how because the fact of the matter is some of you have been allowing yourself to be wooed. Huh? The devil gets aggressive. All right? You got to understand that, uh, uh, that the enemy, enemy, and you got to be careful what you entertain. Huh? Now, I got to be very wise and selective in what I'm getting ready to say. I want to make sure I put this delicately so that it does not seem condemning and it does not seem um, um, that I'm saying something that's justifiable. But this, this, let's, let's just try it. If you dress like sex and sexy, don't be surprised if you are approached like sex and sexy. If you dress like you are whatever, don't be surprised when whatever shows up to get paid. I'll say that. Now, a person can dress like they want. Nobody has a right to violate, trespass against anybody. I'm just saying, don't be surprised. That when you set yourself in a certain place, in a certain way, don't be surprised when what you are advertising shows up to make a claim. Because the enemy gets aggressive, especially when you have favor in your life. So the fact that Joseph was in the midst of all that he had gone through and he still operated in favor, we understand that the temptation came. And I want to tell you uh, that as you invite favor in your life, as we look at the life of Joseph, Joseph was a favored man, but it did not mean that temptation didn't come his way. Huh? So, so we see then that it was visual, versatile, vivacious. There was a vertex. It was vicious, very similar to, it was vehement. And then, but thank God that Joseph did not wait to do anything that would disrupt the flow of favor. Joseph said, uh-uh, I got the favor of God in my life. Somebody say, I thank God for the favor that's working in my life right now. I thank God for the favor that God is working in my life. There's some things that's coming together for me. There's some things that God has promised. There's some things I'm seeing right now that I'm coming out from under some stuff. I see some things working in the marriage. I see some things working in the children. I see some challenges. I've been dealing with some job issues, but I see some stuff working together, and I'm not going to do anything that's going to disrupt the flow of favor in my life. Joseph knew uh, that his favor came as a result of his relationship with God, and his favor with Potiphar was how he uh, functioned and how he handled his everyday life. And he was determined that I have to keep uh, inviting favor in my life. And even though the temptations came, we can be victorious if we uh, continue and we counter the venom that comes from the enemy. When Potiphar's wife came and when the tempter came and when I tell you uh, that uh, when favor meets temptation, the first thing you got to be is vibrant. Somebody say vibrant. Uh, yeah, that means having or showing great life and activity and energy and being strong and bright. Joseph was spirit-filled. Uh, whenever the proposition came, he did not subject to the proposition. Just because the enemy presents an option does not mean that uh, he had to go for it. Uh, you can be able to live full of vibrancy, uh, but consider the favor on your life. Joseph Joseph said, uh, I have life, and, and I have it more abundantly, and, and I have vibrancy, uh, but I would rather 
enough uh, have the favor of God than to allow my flesh to control where God is taking me. I wish I could get somebody in here. You ought to take your, uh, your uh, to touch yourself and say, listen, I'd rather have the favor of God than to allow my temptation uh, to drain favor out of my life. Am I talking to anybody today? And then there's another thing. He, he was venerable. And, and that means that he commanded respect. Uh, it's commanded respect by age or character or he's honored. He was an honest uh, man. He was full of integrity in his life. The Bible says that Joseph reminded Potiphar's wife how Potiphar had entrusted him with so much. And he was committed to doing what was right in the sight of God. He said, you are Potiphar's wife. And if I sleep with you, he said, I'll be sinning against God. He was an honorable man. You got to recognize that you got to decide before before you get into a situation that I am going to stand firm in the faith. I'm going to stand firm on the word of God because the enemy will throw options your way. And that's why every day you wake up, it doesn't matter if you're 15 or if you're 95, you got to say, God, I need for you to take me through this day. I need you to cover me and protect me because I know that there will be the onslaught of the enemy. And I know that he's going to be throwing some stuff my way. But but give me the power because I am the temple of the Holy Ghost and the, the Holy Spirit will not dwell in unclean places and I need to understand uh, that I got to be honorable and, and I got to be upright and I got to keep my faith when the enemy throws options because uh, somebody's got some options on the table right now. I know I'm cutting down through some place right now that there's some options that have been put on the table. There's some propositions that you trying to consider right now but I want to tell you right now I came uh, to cut the neck off of the devil I came today uh, to put a fork down on his neck I came today to pierce him right through the throat because I recognize the very trick of the enemy I sense the spirit of what he's doing because God is promoting and pushing favor into your life and the devil is trying you but I want to tell you another thing that you got to be is vigilant somebody says say vigilant. I'm about to end and, and the Bible says uh, 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 when you're vigilant it means keenly watchful to detect danger. First Peter 5 and 8 says uh, that listen, you got to be sober. You got to be vigilant for the adversary, the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Huh? We got to be watchful. You got to go in with your wide, eyes wide open. You got to be sensitive to the spirit. And you got to recognize that every compliment is not a compliment just for compliment's sake. Sometimes it's a compliment to flatter you to get in. Huh? Everything that seems okay, every time it seems inviting, you got to be very vigilant. You got to be very watchful. We need the Holy Ghost who will guide us and who will guard us and who will lead us into all truth. And we don't just need him to help us celebrate on Sunday morning. We don't just need the Holy Ghost to help us with a holy dance, um, but we need the Holy Ghost to help us to be vigilant every day. It means that on these streets and on these jobs and in the world, uh, the enemy is looking and he is waiting. But Joseph, when you make up your mind to yield not to temptation because the yielding is a sin uh, Joseph was so determined that favor was going to flow uh, that the last V uh, on uh, his way to victory is vacate somebody say vacate and yeah there comes a time in the situation uh, vacate means to give up possession or occupancy of something it means to give up uh, or uh, to relinquish and the Bible says in Genesis 39 and 12 uh, that uh, Joseph, when she became too aggressive, when she came pulling on him and started touching him, he knew that the enemy had gone too far. And the Bible says that uh, Joseph, when she caught, verse 12, she caught him by his garment. That thing was on her so bad. 
she been whispering, she been twerking, she been jerking, she been hitting, she been dropping the, uh, the, the cleavage, she been doing everything, she put on a higher heel, she, she did everything she could, and it just seemed like that man just kept working and working, is it dumb, it, what, is it blind, and then she had put on everything she could perfume, she had bought all the new products, she had on all uh, the new Mac makeup, she had everything, she had, she had it all, she said, my God, this man don't see nothing there. She said, I'm going to grab him. She grabbed him. You, she, she said, she said, <laughs> and he ain't coming to me, but I'm getting ready to come to him. And, 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 and you got to understand that, that when and if you find yourself about to move into the place of the forbidden, you got to learn the power to vacate. Come help me, somebody. You got to learn how to get up out of the situation in order to keep the favor in your life. You may have to quickly move out of a situation uh, even if you had been led by your flesh and you were tempted. Now, come on, somebody. I, the Bible didn't say it, uh, but Joseph was a man. Come on now. And the Bible said that he was good looking. It did not say, uh, but come on, with common sense and with the way the flesh moves, you got to know um, that at some point he must have looked back. He's painting, but come on. He was no, he's a, he's human. He's favored, but he's human. And, and, and so with, he's mopping, cutting the hedges. She in the window. He's human. He's human. And so he said, we don't know. We, we know. we know that he had favor. We know he wanted to continue to favor. He resisted. He turned away. He said, I can't do it. Do you belong to the master? And, and so something might have been going on in him too. Come on, somebody. And there, must, there could have been some sort of feelings. And that Joseph, when she touched him, he said, oh, the devil is alive. I got to get out of here. You better learn the power of vacate because sometimes you let yourself get full. Sometimes you allow yourself to get wooed. Sometimes you played around back. Sometimes you tease back. Sometimes you text back. Sometimes you said something back and now that thing has come upon you. Well, let me tell you, there's never, it's never too late. That's why the Bible says that with every temptation, he will give you a way to vacate. Somebody say, there's power in vacating. Joseph, Joseph was vibrant. Uh, Joseph was venerable. Joseph was vigilant. And finally, he said, I got to vacate the premises. And that is the problem with many today. Many did not vacate. Many did not get out of the presence. And 1 Thessalonians 5, 22 uh, says, abstain from every form of evil. In other words, you got to shun the very presence of evil. Joseph said uh, that I'm not dealing with it. I'm not going to keep on uh, rebuking it. I'm not going to keep on looking at it. I'm just going to get out of its presence. Uh, and you got to understand, uh, why is it that you're always hanging around what is uh, trying uh, to take you down? I wish I could get somebody. Why are you always figuring around and playing around with what is trying to bust up your favor? Why is it that you keep on toying with what you know is getting ready to destroy your life? Why, Samson, are you still playing around with Delilah when she told you uh, to tell me the secret of your power so I can destroy you? Isn't that something about us? We got to use some wisdom uh, so that whenever the enemy comes in, we got to know what his trick is all about. Somebody say, get out and do the Joseph. Yes, sir. Can I encourage somebody this morning? It's time to do the Joseph. Can I tell you that maybe you are just about to allow it to overtake you, but it's time to do the Joseph. It's time to vacate. Somebody say vacate. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but God has given us the spirit of flee. Somebody say vacate. I got to get up 
and out of here. Uh, you got to understand that, uh, that uh, you know, every time uh, the enemy comes in and he's trying to pull you in, it's time to vacate. It's time to depart. It's time to stop entertaining things uh, that, and start walking in victory. It's time for you to say uh, what you will or what you want. Call me what you will and call me what you want. Uh, but I understand that it is better to have favor than to stand there and fall to the temptation of the devil. And yeah, she told a lie on uh, Joseph. She said he tried to assault her. She said he tried to rape her. And when uh, Potiphar came home, he said, I'm putting him in jail. And Joseph had to uh, go to jail for what this woman said, but he still had his integrity intact. He still had his favor intact. I would rather have to go through some things and then to lose my favor. Come on, somebody. Is there anybody who's determined this morning and that maybe I'm in a situation and it's time for me to vacate. Maybe it's time for me to uh, get up and remove myself. Maybe I feel myself getting a little weak, but I'm determined that favor is in my life. How many of you are going to keep favor in your life? If you determine, stand on your feet. I'm done. I'm done. I want to tell you that when favor meets temptation, there are seven things I gave you that will be typical. trying something. Whatever it is, the enemy is versatile. He knows. He knows what to use on you. He knows what to use on you. He knows what to use on you. Favor meets. If you're looking for dynamic worship, inspirational teaching, and a friendly atmosphere, you can visit us on Sundays at 221 West Bradley Street in Gastonia, North Carolina. For more information about our ministry, you can call 704-865-9016. To order your personal copy of today's message or any other broadcast, please call 704-865-9016 and indicate the broadcast date. Or you can just visit us online at www.friendshipgastonia.com. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast with Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church. Make sure you join us next week at the same time. And remember, let God take control and let the Spirit flow.